Okay, good evening. Welcome to the Falls Township Board of Supervisors meeting for December 19th, 2016. Uh, we'll begin with the salute to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Bolton? Mr. Galloway? Here. Mr. Brasky? Here. Mr. Barbie? Here. Mr. Dent? Here. Mr. Rocco? Here. Apologize for the uh, late start uh, this evening. We had an executive session uh, before our meeting. Mr. Clark, want to summarize, please? Yes, Mr. Darby. Uh, prior to the meeting, the board held an executive session to discuss various personnel matters. Thank you. Um, this is our last meeting of the year, uh, and we're starting off the last meeting in a very good way with our another graduation ceremony for a Citizens Police Academy. Uh, and I see uh, multiple members of uh, the leadership here of the department. I'm not sure who to hand it off to first. Mr. Gray, we're we going with the chief or right to Officer uh, Yeager. Officer uh, John Yeager, I believe, is in. Okay. You could stop by. Stop by. Quiet down. Peanut gallery. Sorry. Most of our uh, citizens who attended. Is that on? No. There you go. That was <laughs> Most of our citizens that attended the Citizens Police Academy are here tonight. So if I'm, I prepared a few words, if I may, gentlemen, to sure. speak with you. So good evening, Mr. Chairman and fellow board members. Tonight I have come before you to recognize our participants that attended the 2016 Falls Township Police Citizen Police Academy. They are David Blank, Victor Cole, Julian Green. Harry Haley, Casey Hannock, Tammy Hannock, Patrick Johnson, Jason Morgan, and Michelle Saupe. I would like to give you an overview of this year's curriculum. We began on September 14th with the standard welcome, welcoming paperwork. The remainder of the class was spent explaining what we will be doing each and every week, and then we took a look at our history and the structure of the department. Our second class focused on crime scene investigation. We split the citizens into two working groups and had them work a, a crime scene that we created. Thanks to Gina Seiler for lying on the ground for over an hour. <laughs> the following week, both groups presented to us their findings. They were charged with telling us all the things that they would have done at the crime scene and steps they would have taken to work this investigation. After they were done, we told them the facts of the case and the citizens were shown all the crime scene photos. Our first class in October was use of force. This night was a lecture followed by hands-on training. Our fifth class was about officer safety, deadly force, and traffic stop procedures. We spent a Saturday late morning and early afternoon at the police range. We watched the snipers shoot various items from 100 yards away. Then they learned about the SWAT training procedures. We showed them the equipment that is used and finished with dynamic room entries while using paintball guns. We then visited Judge Vislosky at Court 10. She spoke about her courtroom procedure and told us what is expected of a police officer in her courtroom. The citizens were able to watch two arraignments, one by video and the other in person. On October 26, we did traffic stop scenarios. We had our girls from records act as role players to create a stressful situation. Thanks to Colleen, Donna, and Amy for a great job with this. On November 2nd, we had our canine class. Monty was in the classroom for the talk and the demonstration while TAG was handled by all at Van Hoffman Park as he tracked. We had an evening with a narcotics presentation. We then had some more role players come in and put our citizens through stressful police scenarios. A special thanks to Jackie Busby, Doran Johnson, Jack Murphy, and Gina Seiler. On December 7th, we had a class called Shoot, Don't Shoot. The citizens must take, make split second decisions as they watch a video. We also try to create a little stress here. We finished our last class with an overview of the Diane Corrado murder investigation. I would like to thank the following officers that instructed in this year's Citizens Police Academy. They are Lieutenants Whitney and Pletnick, Detective Sergeant Clark, <coughs> Sergeant White, Corporal Langan, Officers Moratti, Elmore, and Eisenhower. Lastly, I would like to thank Chief Wilcox for his support with this community policing program. It is his idea for our agency to be as transparent as possible. This program, along with the Youth Police Academy, allows us to continue a partnership with our community to work as a team to keep Falls Township a safe place to live. Thank you. I was wondering if we could have some photos with all of you. Well, I'm sure you want to do the uh, things first or the diplomas uh, first? Or? 
we are actually we're just going to give the diplomas when we go back to the okay. office. Okay, sure. So just sure. stand Absolutely. back here. Uh, well, where do you want us? Uh, I, I guess show. right in front. Okay. Here. In here in front, please. Okay, guys. Taking a picture. demonstrate a chokehold on dents. <laughs> what do you think? Chokehold on dents, they can demonstrate? What? They should demonstrate a chokehold on you. I'll demonstrate a chokehold on you. <laughs> Thank our police department, uh, especially Officer Yeager, who is um, you know, involved in all, all our community policing activities, does a lot of their, their graduations as well as the Youth Police Academy, uh, and obviously, as you saw, the Citizens Police Academy. Uh, certainly a, a wonderful thing. We're, we're proud that we can offer to residents, and uh, I don't know if Officer Yeager said when the next, the next one will be sometime next year. Yeah. I think they're going to take a little bit of a break, as you saw the numbers a little down from, from years in the past, uh, so at some point, uh, you know, trying to find a, a good time to have this when people are able to do it, you know, not on vacation, et cetera. So, uh, but keep an eye out for free, um, future opportunities for that. And I know the fire marshal does something similar with his academy. So keep an eye out for anybody out there on the website and cable channel. Let's get the number six. These guys are going to sit here all night for nothing. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to, um, we're going to skip real fast to item number six. Um, in our agenda. It's um, public hearing for consideration of application for Emily Towing and Recovery LLC for standard tow truck record service for the 2017 calendar year. Um, I know that we there was some issue regarding some of the paperwork every year. Towers that want to be on the tow list for Falls Township have to submit documentation of a variety of sorts, uh, improve, for example, showing insurance uh, licenses, um, you know, the vehicle registrations, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and there was a question about some of the insurance information provided by Emily Towing. But um, I know, Ms. Gallagher, we got something today that is di was different than what we thought we had or different than we had before. Uh, we got additional information. Mr. Gray and myself met with our representatives from Emily Towing this morning. We were provided additional information, so we're just in the process of verifying that. Um, we believe we should have this wrapped up in the next couple of days, and we don't anticipate there being any issues with the 2017 license. Okay. All right. And so there's uh, the public hearing, basically, we're going to table until January 3rd? Correct. All right. All right. And if obviously, if the information we've received, uh, the additional information that was provided by Emily Towing, if that checks out, then uh, we won't have, need to have a hearing at all. Also correct. Okay. So is there a motion then to table the hearing for Emily Towing until January 3rd? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't right. want to make you wait here all night. Right. So, okay. Thank you. All right. Item number one is uh, public comment. I didn't have any names on the sign-in sheet. Uh, I don't see anybody here really to speak. So I guess we'll just skip, skip past that one. Item two is consider a request from 38 Cabot Boulevard LP to install an on-lot sewage disposal system pursuant to Chapter 184 of the Falls Township Code. Uh, we're going with Ms. Gallagher again. Certainly, as the board will recall at the last meeting, uh, an ordinance was, was passed which would allow 
um, new businesses or property owners that are attempting to connect to the public sanitary sewers in front of their residence or business but are unable to do so due to capacity issues to install a holding tank or other on-lot system um, and pump and haul the sewage away until such time as capacity becomes available. This would obviously be subject to the review and approval of the township engineer. The business 38 Cabot Boulevard LP um, has submitted a request to pump and haul their sewage from the location at 38 Cabot Boulevard. There is currently no capacity available uh, with the Township of Falls Authority, so they have entered into an agreement with the authority that they will connect when capacity does become available. Um, so we've reviewed this with Mr. Sullivan's office, and he has recommended that they be approved to enter into this program. Okay, comments or questions for Mr. Sullivan or Ms. Gallagher? No questions. No questions. Once the ability to connect comes up, once the ability to connect uh, becomes available, how long will they have to do so? They would have one year. <coughs> That's all I have. I have none. Okay. Uh, don't see any public comment, uh, public uh, here to comment. All right. Um, is there a motion then to, we're approving the agreement? Is that the prosper? You're off? approving the request, yes. All right. Is there a motion then to approve the request for the pump and hall agreement? Um, Regarding 38 Cabot Boulevard. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, item three is consider adopting the 2017 budget resolution and establishing the milling rate. Mill, excuse me, change it. Consider adopting the 2017 budget and consider uh, the adopting the resolution establishing the millage rate for 2017. Um, obviously, this has been something that we have. Uh, advertised uh, for over a month now. Um, I do know there was a resident, Mr. Mariani, last week did have questions that he, he raised. Uh, he's not here this evening, uh, but I still think it's, it's fair if we give some kind of a response to some of the questions. Mr. Gray, I know Ms. Rukoff's here as well. Uh, if you can kind of give a summary of some of the things he, he asked about and just um, you know, for people that might be interested in the, in the answers. Certainly. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Mariani's first question was in regard to the bookkeeper salaries. There was $116,500 budgeted for 2016. That amount was raised to $171,000 in 2017. Uh, in the 2016 uh, budget, this line was for two bookkeepers. The third person in finance was budgeted as a clerk. The total was $166,000 for the three employees. Uh, in 2017, the clerk, the clerk was promoted to a bookkeeper. So that line item is now for three bookkeepers and the line item for the clerk salary is zero. So that money was basically shifted to the other line item. There was another uh, question about the plumbing permits, 100,000 in 2016, and that amount fell to 36,000 in 2017. Uh, in 2016, Penwood Crossing was issued 835 plumbing permits for a water meter installation project. Uh, this single project almost tripled the plumbing permit revenue for 2016. Um, in 2017, we are budgeting revenues in line with prior years, 35,000 in 2014 and 33,000 for 2015, as the Penwood Crossing project was a one-time event. And then there was a question about overtime. Who is earning this and why is it budgeted at these expected levels? Uh, overtime is budgeted by department based on potential overtime costs. We, not, we may not spend the budgeted amount, but employees are eligible to earn it, so we have to budget for any possibility that may arise. So they were the questions and we just want to <clears throat> respond. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, all right, so discussion and questions regarding the budget. These are two separate items. We'll have to adopt the budget first and then adopt the resolution set it, establishing the millage rate. Um, so is there, uh, or are there any questions or comments for Mrs. Rukoff or Mr. Gray? And we'll start on what we start at the other end here. Mr. Rocco? Uh, no, excellent job. Thank you. Dance? Yeah, this budget process is something that for us starts, you know, a month or two ago and, uh, you know, with meetings with Mr. Gray and the whole process and the presentation is excellent as always by Mrs. Rukoff and Mr. Gray. And thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Braski? No questions. Mr. Galloway? No questions. 
Yeah. So, yeah, and you know, obviously agree. Uh, we have a really, really good staff. Uh, it helps obviously to have a manager who has finance background as well. Not that Mr. Rukoff needs that much help, but it certainly, uh, you know, uh, you know, the more the more talented people you have around you, uh, you know, certainly it makes it much easier. Uh, and while we get involved in the past, you know, couple months. Um, you know, certainly for the department heads, the process starts even before that, where they're looking forward to 2017, thinking of what they're going to need to purchase, uh, just standard things they have to update, uh, standard maintenance on different uh, items that they need, and, um, and then figuring out what the cost of those items is going to be, and then projecting forward a little bit in terms of what they might need that maybe they hadn't uh, foreseen or, or trying to plan for eventualities, whether it's buying salt for you know the winter time or chlorine for the pool or you know uh, obviously salaries and things are a little bit more uh, stable um, and then all that is submitted to um, finance and then to the manager and then, it, and then it comes to us so it really is a process that takes you know several months from beginning to end so I want to thank everybody all the department heads for all their work as well as Mrs. Rukoff and, and uh, um, Mr. Gray so um, as soon as any public comment and see any Interested public comment. Again, so first we'll um, entertain a motion to adopt the 2017 budget as presented. So moved. Second. second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then we'll have to set up, pass a resolution which will establish the millage rate for the taxes, which will be resolution 16. 41. 41. Mm -hmm. So is there a motion to author or to pass or to adopt resolution 1641 establishing the millage rate for 2017? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Okay, item four is consider awarding workers compensation contract for the year 2017. Mr. Gray? Township uh, received a quote for workers compensation insurance from Vaughn Insurance for the year 2017. Mm -hmm. The quote of $467,737 is from Delaware Valley Workers' Comp Compensation Trust, or as they go by Divot and State Workmen's Insurance Fund, or SWIF. Uh, SWIFT is used for the volunteer fire coverage. Uh, the township has had Divot as its work comp carrier since 2003. At uh, this time, the board is asked to consider Divot and SWIFT for Falls Township's 2017 workers' comp insurance coverage in the amount of 467737 Okay. Comments or questions for Mr. Gray? Mr. Galloway? Uh, no questions, no. Mr. Baraski? No no? None. I have none. Okay. All right. It is a slight increase, $10,000 increase over a previous year. Um, we can see that's kind of in line with previous uh, increases. Um, and then and the assumption would be, obviously, if we were using it more, then obviously the cost is going to go up. Yes, plus the payroll that is used each year to determine the premium increases every year. And there was a slight increase with SWIFT for the volunteer firemen. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any public comment? Seeing none. Okay. Is there a motion then to... Um, award the or to um, accept the quote from Delaware Valley Workers Compensation Trust and the State Workmen's Insurance Fund for workers' compensation um, in the amount of $467,737. So so second. Um, okay, Mrs. Paul? Mr. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Paraski? Yes. Mr. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Dentz? Yes. Mr. Rocco? Yes. Okay, item five is consider the crossing guard contract for the period of 2017-2020. Um, Mr. Gray? The Township and the Crossing Guard Union, SEIU Local 32BJ, uh, recently worked together for the uh, new agreement for the years 2017 through 2020. Um, we did come to an agreement with uh, the union. Uh, some of the highlights of this uh, contract include a four-year term as mentioned from 2017 to 2020 and a three percent salary increase for each year uh, the board is asked to consider to approve the agreement with the crossing guard unit uh, for the years 2017 to 2020 okay comments or questions mr rocco i have none mr dance no mr Braski? no that, it's pretty cut and dry no yeah. questions here okay all right uh, public comment see none is there a motion then to um, 
adopt the contract for period 2017 to 2020 for the crossing guards. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item six, we tabled. Uh, item seven, consider purchase of copiers and a scanner for the police department and township administration. Mr. Gray. The township uh, recently secured a quote to replace existing equipment with new units and add a wide format printing and scanning for the same price that the township currently pays on a monthly average. Uh, tonight, uh, Matt Markey is here to discuss this project forward. Hello. Okay. Uh, we have a proposal from uh, Xerox to uh, give us newer equipment plus replace some currently leased equipment and bring in wide format scanning and printing for our average monthly cost now. Um, any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Okay. So the price doesn't change at all? Really for us, no, no. And how long is this contract for? I believe it was uh, 63 months total. New one. Well, I'm sorry? The new contract is 63 months? Yes, yes. And how long was the old one? Didn't we do this just a couple years ago? Uh, we did this for about four years ago, about five-year contracts, and right around, you know, the last, you know, 12 months, start entertaining this again, okay. new technology. Um, Xerox is prepared to move any equipment we have to a new complex when that gets rolling. Uh, they'll be moving it all over there. They'll do the installation, set up, all that configuration. Tom's just got to find room for the wide format. So is this all of our equipment? This is all the copiers, scanners, and printers that we use? This is about 90% of the stuff. There still be like the local desktop printers in certain offices, um, Betsy's office, places like that are in the police side. But yeah, this will be all the bulk equipment on our side and the police side. Okay. But the price doesn't change. I guess that's a good deal. Because we're still going with Xerox, there's no early buyout of the original contract? Uh, yeah, they, it's built, that's actually built in into the cost. Uh, I think Xerox is providing us with a check for the remaining lease payments uh, with Kyocera. So it's actually more of a savings, but they're eating the, I think, 11 months or whatever it is on the remaining contract. And I am confused because I didn't know we were doing them throughout the whole township building. So are we, is code going to be provided with a full size printer now that we can print? Full yes, documents. for plans, yes. They will get the wide. And that's no additional cost to us because we don't have that right now. It's included in the same amount that we're currently paying. And they're going to get high quality photo printing for the detectives? Yes, they submitted samples and they're adequate for the police for, for sure. The unit that's going up there does photo printer, uh, quality paper, high quality ink. Um, they have a different unit that's going in than the other places. Uh, we'll also have um, now built into the second drawer envelope printing, which currently we have separate machines for that we have to maintenance, but now we'll be able to eliminate those and just print envelopes directly from the multifunction units. Uh, this uh, agreement include, uh, obviously includes maintenance, if anything goes wrong. What about things like toner and, and um, ink, ink and things? Everything is included except paper and staples. So we, but that's our current contracts now too. Okay. paper and staples but they include toner servicing um maintenance you know i think every was it a 120 days maintenance cycle things like that okay. uh, they take care of it all plus unifying all of this allows us to see all of the usage in one big pool right now it's separate where the old some of the older machines i can't address to see what the usage is um per department things like that now unifying them all under one piece of software uh, we'll be able to see and monitor what's going on and eliminate over just things like that okay. mm -hmm. so, and they're going to pay us out of the buy us out of the other contracts yes yeah. yeah really it comes down to being able to get more machines uh, that's where we're getting the cost savings and how you know right now we did it as, like, <coughs> on an as-needed basis on the police side and on our side we had our three units putting it all together in one big package with the wide format wide format we are paying for the toner and the paper because we don't really know how much we're going to use it we have no idea we don't have it currently so i didn't want to build in anything because i wasn't sure if it would be wasting money so uh, right now the units are it's a entry level it's not a giant one you would see in an engineering firm but it's adequate uh good reviews i got uh, def different references so What's the largest drawing size? Do you know? Uh, it was still the it was still the largest. Whatever Tom gave, I think it was forty. Whatever the largest set of plans he does was was capable by this machine. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? 
No, we're getting eighty five hundred dollars back from Yeah. Yeah, that's good. No. Yeah, I mean it's certainly if you know you're getting more of the more machinery and, and uh they're buying out your contract and you're not paying anything different than and what you would be paying otherwise. Um no good work by you. Thank you very much for all the all yeah, your nice effort. Work, Mr. Mark. Thank so, you. Yeah. All right. Um thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Any, any other comments or questions? Any public comment needed? Okay. Um is there a motion then to authorize um, the purchase of copiers and scanners for the police department and township administration according to the memo from Mr. Markey dated 11-30-2016? Yes, I'll make the motion. Second it. Mrs. Pullen? Mr. Calloway? Yes. Mr. Braski? Yes. Mr. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Dent? Yes. Mr. Rockham? Yes. <clears throat> okay, minutes for the December 5th meeting. Comments, questions? Suggestions or uh, corrections, rather? None. Excellent minutes, as always, Mrs. Pullen. Yep. Okay, is there a motion to accept the minutes as presented for December 5th, 2016? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Engineers, engineers report, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Harvey. I really only have one thing to, to uh, announce tonight, and that's the boat ramp at the Quaker Pen Park uh, has been re successfully removed and stored on site. That occurred on December 12th, uh, 2016. Okay. Uh, any comments or questions for Mr. Sullivan regarding engineering work? No. No. I'll be easy. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, is there a motion then to accept an engineer's report dated December 15th, 2016? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, bill list is in the amount of $1,605,550.75. Uh, of that $1.6 million, uh, about $1.3 million uh, is payroll and health insurance. Uh, there's also, this is the bill uh, list where we pay for um, the incentives for our firefighters. Uh, firefighters that are three companies, volunteers uh, can make, um, well, listen, I think it's $599. $599.99. Okay. Uh, they can make it uh, up to that much based on how many calls they run over the course of the year. Uh, and so if you don't make as many calls, then you don't, you know, uh, reach the maximum. But it is obviously an incentive we can offer uh, to those uh, Firefighters is something we can do to, to help them, uh, considering all the work they do for us. Uh, there, in addition to that, it's about um, about fifty thousand dollars in state funding, uh, or excuse me, mixture of state funding and escrow. Uh, another fifty-three thousand dollars for the road program. Um, so a good chunk, you know, about one point four million uh, out of the one point six is just those collection of a couple things. Comments or questions regarding the bill list? Mr. Rocco? None. None. Thanks. Mr. Braski? No, thanks. Mr. Galloway? No, thank you. Okay. Is there a motion then to pay the bills $1,605,550.75? So moved. Seconded. Mrs. Pullen? Mr. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Braski? Yes. Mr. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Fence? Yes. Mr. Rocco? Yes. Okay. Uh, executive session we had a little earlier. Uh, police Chief's report. Chief Wilcox is here. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board and staff. I bring nothing significant this evening, but I just wanted to make a few comments. First and foremost, when we, we all started out the year and we all have goals and objectives. And uh, I would like to think that uh, we've been very successful in achieving our goals and objectives. But the main goal and objective is every single year is for every one of your policemen to go home safe. And how we accomplish that, we accomplish it through many different ways. We accomplish it through training, through equipment, through um, any number of things. But behind all that is this Board of Supervisors. I think it's, it's very important that the public knows how cooperative, how professional you gentlemen are, 
and providing our police department with everything that we need on a day in and day out basis. Therefore, you gentlemen play a significant part in making sure our officers go home safe. And that's what it's all about. We're all in a community here and we want our police officers to go home safe. And <clears throat> I think on the eve of Christmas, I just wanted to thank you everybody and uh, tell you how congenial you guys are whenever we reach out to you you guys are always professional your questions uh, whatever you do and uh, as you can see I've been around here a long time look at my hair <laughs> <laughs> but the bottom line is that this board is very very cooperative professional and does the right thing all the time and I want to thank everybody and that includes Mr. Gray also Mr. Gray plays a significant part in that and the entire staff so tonight I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and to say thank you okay. thank you man thank you um, chief, just Merry any Christmas. questions for the chief regarding <coughs> anything? No. no I don't no anything no Merry Christmas, right? thank, you. thank you okay Merry thank you very much Merry Christmas thank you man <laughs> okay manager comment it's just a few items tonight. Uh, <clears throat> there is an indemnification and hold harmless agreement that's been prepared for the board's review tonight and consideration. This is between New Falls Road LLC, St. Joseph's Court, and Falls Township. Uh, the developer desires to construct two sample houses in an area that is currently accessible via paved roadways prior to entering into the necessary developer's agreement with the township with respect to the entire development and prior to commencing construction of the remainder of the development. Uh, again, this agreement has been prepared for board consideration at this time. Okay. So while everything is sort of getting ready, uh, the plan for the developer, he'd like to move forward. He'd like to build sample homes. I know I spoke to him recently. He's, I forget how many names, I think he's 80 people signed, you know, kind of interested in names on a list so far. Um, you know, so think obviously a lot of interest in the site, and he's he'd like to go move ahead at least with building this. The problem is, of course, that all the documentation, everything isn't filed yet, uh, and so this agreement would basically hold us harmless that we would be allowed we would allow him to build these two sample homes for him to show people who were interested, but he'd do it um, do them at his own risk. So that if anything happens with the development in the long run, while things are getting finalized, uh, he understands that uh, he is basically on the hook for everything. Uh, and that uh, he can't sort of sue the township and, and say that we, you know, did him financial harm by letting him build these homes. He knows he's doing it on his own risk. Um, so, uh, comments or questions uh, for either Mr. Well, I guess we'd for almost anybody down there, Mr. Sullivan or Mr. Clark or Mr. Gray. Anything? No. No. No questions. Okay. All right, then. Is there um, a motion to um, enter into the indemnification and hold harmless agreement with? Uh, New Falls Road LLC. So moved. Second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Tool Pros Group Inc. would like to put its land development application on hold for approximately one year. They are requesting a refund of the escrow submitted to Falls Township in connection with the application. Uh, TNM and our solicitor Rudolph Clark has reviewed and has no problems with the release of the escrow balance. The board is asked to, asked to authorize an escrow release in the amount of $7,920 to Tool Pros Group, Inc. Okay. Um, this, is, this is one that I'm trying to remember yeah. something about this. Do we know where this company was interested in moving to in a rough area? I don't remember this having this come up in front of us on a letter of intent. Yeah, they're building an addition on an existing building. Um, I'm going to say down around Kresge Road in that area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And you have no issue with it, Mr. Clark? No issue with it? No, we do not. Mr. Sullivan, you're good too? Yes. Okay. Any other comments or questions? No. 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 Right. Is there a motion then to uh, release the balance of the escrow, $7,920? So moved. Second. Uh, Mr. Pullen? Mr. Calloway? Yes. Mr. Brassie? Yes. Mr. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Dent? Yes. Mr. Rocco? Yes. Township received a letter from Mr. Sullivan dated December 7th uh, regarding escrow release number four for Marsville Commons LP. Uh, he is recommending a release of $49,563.45. Uh, 
uh, the board is asked to consider this release at this time. Okay. Comments or questions? No. None. Is there a motion and a release to the escrow, excuse me, is there a motion to grant escrow release number four to Marsville Commons LP, $49,563.45? So moved. Seconded. Mrs. Pullen? Mr. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Brasky? Yes. Mr. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Dent? Yes. Mr. Rocco? Yes. Uh, the township received a, another letter from Mr. Sullivan regarding escrow release number one for TBU Wells uh, LLC, uh, recommending a release in the amount of $369,899.21. Uh, the board is asked to consider this escrow release at this time. How much questions? Um, Mr. Sullivan, are you almost done down there? Yes. Uh, what they have left to do is paving, and they can't do that at this time of year. So. Understood. That was all I had. Okay. Anybody else? Nothing. Okay. Is there a motion to grant or to um, approve escrow release number one, TBU Wells LLC, $369,899.21? So moved. Second. Mrs. Pullen. Mr. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Brasky? Yes. Mr. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Dentz? Yes. Mr. Rocco? Yes. Township received a letter from Eric Clace at Gilmore and Associates on December 7th regarding Hyacin Minor Subdivision, requesting an extension on this project for 90 days uh, ending on March 7th, 2017. Board is asked to consider this extension. Uh, Mr. Clark, we have four letters of extension here, all for different dates, all from different companies. Um, is there any reason why Mr. Gray couldn't run through all four of them real fast and we just take one vote on all four of them? No, you can handle them all uh, as a group if you would like. Okay. All right. So that's the highest in one, Mr. Gray. Why don't you, take, why don't you do all four of them? Sure. A quick summary. Second one is for Dollar General. Uh, he received a letter from Michael Young uh, requesting an extension on time for this project until February 20th, 2017. Third letter is from Carl Dress. Uh, he is representing Pensbury Manor. They have a waiver of land development application requesting an extension for 90 days, which would take us to April 14th. And finally, a letter from Thomas Hecker um, regarding new Seaview Lubricycle 150 Solar Drive requesting an extension until June 30th, 2017. Okay. Um, first off, any uh, objections to doing all four of these together? No. None. Are any no. comments or questions regarding any of them? No. no. All right. Is there a motion in the grant all four letters of extension for the dates outlined? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> wow. All in favor? Aye. 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 I uh, just want to make an announcement that the following businesses were approved to open operations in Falls Township during the month of November 2016. They include uh, Teresa's Tarot Shop located at 8806 New Falls Road. Tan's. Carrot? I think it's a <laughs> I'm surprised, <laughs> Mr. Gray. They're selling carrots? Tarot. Tarot. Tarot cards? Tarot. 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 Tomato, tomato. I got you. You don't pronounce the second P. Tarot. Thank you. Uh, Tan's Tasty Cakes. <laughs> They sell, does they sell bowling shoes there? No, no, no <laughs> shoes, no shoes. <laughs> uh, Tan's Tasty Cakes, 229 Plaza Boulevard. Dream It Up Hobby and Gift Shop, 914 Trenton Road. And the Christmas Tree Stand, uh, 375 West Trenton Avenue. And finally, just want to announce that uh, the reorganization for the Board of Supervisors will take place Tuesday, January 3rd. 2017 and the township will advertise for that for that meeting that's all i have thank you mr chairman okay thank you okay uh board comment uh mr rocco uh just happy holidays everybody and enjoy it and see you next year thank you okay. mr Dennis. yes happy holidays happy new year uh being the budget tonight i'm a surprise mr mariani wasn't here i hope he's well uh, i'll send him an email to make sure but other than that, uh, like I said, Happy New Year and Happy Holidays. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Brasky? Yeah, just met like everybody else. Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. That's all I have. Right. Mr. Galloway? Just a Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah to everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I did want to recognize, just uh, on behalf of the Board of Supervisors, um, 
We had a longtime volunteer at the Zoning Hearing Board, uh, Ms. Patty Powers, uh, who is stepping down after serving for about a decade uh, on that board. And I know, um, I know Mr. Dentz worked with her, um, and I know all of us sort of uh, knew her, and she was very dedicated to the work she did here in Falls Township. I want to thank her very much uh, for everything she did and all her time. And I know that um, if she's ever interested in volunteering again, I know we'll be glad to have her back. So, um, and again, echoing my um, fellow board members, I'm going to thank, um, I think it was a very good year here in the township. I think we did um, you know, a lot of good things. I want to thank our staff, um, you know, the ones obviously a couple of staff members who were here, but also all the, all the people that work in this building, public works, finance, park and rec, code enforcement, fire marshal's office, uh, as well as the police department for all the work they do day in and day out. Uh, you know, the jobs aren't always, not, aren't always that easy. Um, but uh, they do a lot of good work, and nothing that we could do would happen um, without uh, all of their work. So um, we're just uh, really kind of, you know, just cogs in a wheel, and they do a lot more of the turning than we do. So we appreciate all the work they do, and wish all the residents of Falls Township Merry Christmas. Uh, Hanukkah actually starts on Christmas night uh, this year, uh, which I don't remember that happening too often, but obviously it happens once in a while. So for our Jewish friends and neighbors here in Falls Township, Happy Hanukkah, and very Happy New Year uh, for everybody here in Falls. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.